Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode. It is me, your host, Eball Jones. Right over there, Nelson. Nelson Hansen. <laughs> what's up, bro? Yeah. Good? I'm good, brother. How about yourself? I'm I'm great, man. I am I can't complain at all. You feel me? So, uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at right now, man. So, um. NBA season is upon us, man. You know, we wind it down. It's about that time the NBA season comes back in, man. And, it, and this is about to be year number 20 for LeBron James. Man, that's insane, actually. <laughs> it's crazy, man. So, like, we had an episode before where we talked about, you know, a lot of guys that we grew up watching and our kind of our generational hoopers and NBA players that we grew up on and, we, we kind of just fanned out for a minute, man. So um, now we kind of just, you know, we reminisce when we, when we look back and look kind of current, but now we're about to look current and look forward, moving forward. So let's go to this next generation of guys, man. So, mm. uh, you know, for you, you talked about how, you know, you're a KG fan, and we know currently you're a Giannis fan. We talked about how I was a D-Wade and Kobe guy growing up, and, you know, Damon Westbrook, kind of like my next guys, but, like, Mm-hmm. The the league has a lot of nice young talent coming in. You know, we talked about this with the playoff talk too, man. So, uh, who are some of the guys that you are looking at the younger generation? Not necessarily the Giannis's and the the Jokers and the Joel and B's. Not that class, but like the the one right after them. That's or is coming up next. So, who are some of the guys that you're looking at that you're just like, I like this guy. I like I like something about him. Somebody who's special. I really like this guy. Ooh, so a guy might surprise a couple people, but um, I'm a big, and you know, so I, I I tend to gravitate towards the bigs, honestly, or like the guys who played the biggest, you know, bigs kind of uh, 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 obsolete word kind of nowadays. Like he's a tall player, you know, <laughs> but but one guy that I didn't like since college was uh, Jared Jackson Jr. Like. Because I see some of my game in Jerry Jackson Jr. Like, I feel like I can be Jerry Jackson esque, uh, if that makes sense, you know. Because he always been a shot blocker, he always been a solid defender. He's developing a jump shot, like, he's developed a solid jump shot, you know. You got to play him now, got to guard him, and you know, he, he just solid all around, you know. And he's been that way since college, and so I remember watching, um. Now, now it's crazy because now I can't remember what college he actually went to. I want to say he was at – it wasn't Duke or Kentucky or nothing like that. I have to remember what school he actually went to. Like, we got to look that up real quick because I remember watching him in college, but I can't tell you where he went to school at. But he he always been like – I always looked at him like, man, like I have a very similar game. Michigan State. Michigan, yes, Michigan State, yes. I watched them play in the NCAA tournament and all. I, like, he, his game just reminds me a little bit of myself and, like, where I want to be a little bit. So, Jerry Jackson, Joey, always been somebody that I enjoy watching when you talk about younger guys. And who is somebody else? I would also say John. I mean, they teammates, so, like, it's just fun watching the Grizzlies in general. <laughs> but, yeah. I would say John Morant just because of the, the pure excitement of John Morant. Like, John can do anything exciting. John can get a big block. He could dunk. He could, like, get a fancy pass and an assist. He, he might cross somebody, make a good move, lay it. Like, he could do a lot of things that would just, that's just like, wow. Like, did that just happen? Mm-hmm. Like, that, I feel like the excitement factor of John Morant is cool, too. So, them two guys that, like, when you talk about younger guys, I'm watching Grizzlies games. Like when Grizzlies games come on, I'm on it. Like I'm with it. <laughs> but what you think, bro? What's some who are some young guys you be looking at? Yeah, I was gonna say job probably like my my guy to be like, like I said before, it's Damon Westbrook right now, but like, you know, you gotta pick around that corner, like who's next? Because both of them in their thirties is is one like we know how uh athletic guards get when them when thirty start knocking, like thirty. 31, 32, 33, you know. <laughs> it ain't too kind after the mm-hmm. So, so I'm peeking around the corner looking at guys, so I kind of liking them. And Josh's one of those guys, like you said, he does a little bit of everything, man. And I think what makes him a little bit um, 
different from most athletic guards is the fact that he's really pass first. Like he's really about the teammates and stuff. Like most athletic yeah. guards are have the 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 thought of being selfish and they they only score. You know what I mean? All they do is score. But yeah, he'll drop a little 30 40 ball, but he's gonna just give you eight assists too. You know, and it's not like you know, you know, some some players get eight assists and it's like, oh, he got eight assists. Okay, cool. Jai assists is like, oh snap, he gave you da 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 a top ten highlight for half of them. You know, so mm-hmm. um so that's why I like him, man. Like he he's a walking highlight, man, like, on both ends of the floor. So man. Uh, he 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 different, bro. Like it's it's his it factor is different. You feel me? Like I don't know if we had the conversation on air or not, but I, I said he's kind of like uh the modern day AI. Uh, mm-hmm. He fits. He fits that AI mode as far as just like not not his play style, obviously, but like his attitude, how he carries himself, and it's just like he don't care. He's just gonna be real. He's gonna be him. Like who Jai is off the court, it was just getting on the court. It's just it's the same person. So mm-hmm. I like that about him, man. So that's one guy I really like. Um of course I gotta look at my boys, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. And I sell this guys. Like I gotta throw them in there, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> people want to break them up so bad. So I'm just glad the you know the higher ropes said now nah, we'll keep them together, man. So um those are two guys I love to watch, man. I think I don't think Jalen Brown gets enough credit. He started to. But um, I don't think he gets enough credit for how much he balls out, man. So those are my dudes, man. I really, I really like them. But it's a lot of guys I like, man. But those are probably just the first few that I have to mention. Being a Celtics fan, those are my guys. And Tatum is ridiculous, man. He might get an MVP in the next few years. So mm-hmm. uh, those are probably the mo- mainly few guys that I'm looking at kind of regularly right now, man. So that's the next generation for me. Man, solid guys, though. Like... So you threw up Tatum and Brown. They just got out the finals. They 25, 23. Like, something like that. Yeah. I think Jalen Brown a little bit younger than Tatum. So, yeah. yeah. Like, they just left. They just got out the finals, you know. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, the guards are changing at this point in time, you know. Yeah, man. Like, I think that – um I think that the game overall is kind of changing, too. You know, because yeah. – we kind of we had this conversation a little bit before we got on. It's like you kind of just mentioned how the big the name big is being obsolete, mm-hmm. and it's like you can't really call anybody a certain position anymore because usually a point guard was when we were going to a point guard was like the Steve Nash, the uh, John Stockton, where you know we would talk to run the offense and you know feed everybody the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, generation before me was like feed the big the ball. And kick it back out, then you get your shot. But uh, we grew up off of feed everybody the ball, no matter who it was. Just get the ball, run and push it, get it there. Mm. Then I think my generation, plus a little bit after us, we kind of was like, oh, we can get buckets too. So uh y'all catch y'all when y'all catch y'all. I don't care about that. You know, so <laughs> like Kobe's <laughs> to catch it off the rim. <laughs> Boy, you better get in where you fit in. <laughs> hey, you better catch it out the net, but it's all you gotta worry about, man. So but now it's just like you know, you grow up seeing Shaq push the ball to the floor. And it's like, oh, now you see the Marcus Cousin. We, we saw the Marcus Cousin push up the floor. And after him, it got crazy. Now you see Joker doing it. You see your boy Giannis doing it. Joel Embiid, everybody's running all the all the fives around the point guard now. I'm just like, what are we doing here? Like, what? So now it's just like everybody's blended a little bit of this. It's like this player plays a little bit three, four, five. And this player plays two, three, four. And this player plays one, two. I'm just like, it's, it's weird, man. But. I think today's game is so it's so it has a lot less boundaries on it and so more fluid and it's more open and it's more like uh less structure in a good way to where it's just like you can't put me in a box of what to do and how to do certain things. I think that's the beautiful part of today's game that I like and enjoy watching. Mm. No, I, I definitely enjoy the skill level of today, like how all five guys can do some of the ball and stuff. It's a uh, fast pace. It makes for entertaining basketball, so you know, I, I enjoy that part of that too. Yeah, but I, I, I can't lie though; it is weird, like you said. Like it, it's almost strange, like especially like when the strangest part about it when like the, the, the Nuggets will take the ball out somebody that, like they the other team just score, they'll take the ball out and get the ball to Joker. Let them take the ball up the court. I'd be like, 
Yeah. Where is the guard? Where, <laughs> where is the point guard? <laughs> like that jump, that would be throwing me for a loop. Now you know you get a board, you get a long rebound or something. Maybe that's fine. Like hey, push it, hey. Because I mean I do that from time to time, and I ain't no great ball handler or nothing. I just tell my, I, I know I'm gonna say that though. Like I don't do that all game. These guys doing it all game. Like hey, I I got the board. Let's go run, push it. Yep. But we all remember um. Draymond Green and the Warriors, he got that board in uh, crunch time, and KD was right there. Like, hey, give me the ball, bro, I'm right here. Mm-hmm. Draymond pushing it, like, nah, feel the lane. <laughs> <laughs> he turned that thing over, but, hey, <laughs> they trust Draymond to do that, though. They trust him to make the right decision. But that that, that is different to me because, you know, like, I didn't grow up with that. So, yeah. Now it's like a normal thing. Like you gotta be able to handle the ball. You gotta be able to shoot the ball. Like if you can't, they giving that job to somebody else. Unless you just some kind of elite defender or something, and you dunk everything, then you know you still good. But like if you ain't doing that, you better be able to handle the ball. You better be able to make a, a three standing still wide open. <laughs> yeah. So the game has just changed, man. But it's definitely more entertaining and and definitely like more skillful now. Than, than it has been in the past, and that's cool though. I'm good with that. Like I'm good with that. The 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 direction the game is going, in all honesty. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, you know some of the old heads might complain about how they don't play defense. That we already had a conversation for. We're not gonna yeah. go down that whole thing again. But um, I do feel like you know sometimes. Sometimes I do miss a little good defense. You know what I mean? Like, no, I yeah, miss sure. seeing, I miss seeing a good just lockdown. I think, we, I think the Heat Celtics series with what we felt like we were supposed to get is going to be like a little old school. Not just say old. It's old school for us because you know it's mm-hmm. it's what we grew up watching a little bit. But I think for the younger generation, they're just like, what is this? Like, why are we watching nineteen eighties? Detroit Pistons basketball, but it's like no, bro. This this is this is a high level defensive basketball. But we missed out on that. We probably had like one or two games of actual good defense, man. But it's whatever. But I do miss yeah. seeing like some good team defense where it's more of like, I mean, it's good defense now, but it's just different because it's so spread out and you can't. Um, it's not as as. I don't know how I can't just explain it right now. I should give it more thought, but like it's not, it's a little different. Like it's a good defense because you know you got to rotate a lot more, so it's a lot more scrambling, a lot more wild pace. But like we grew up watching to where it's like you understood certain concepts and it was a lot easier to do. But now because the offense is so spread out, it's almost like now you have to praise good defense even more because it's harder to play good defense. Like the rules are designed mm. for you to not play good defense. So now when a team is playing great defense, it's almost like it's trumping anything defense was doing before because it's just like, man, you shouldn't from half court, bro. How am I defend that? Like, what are we doing here? Like, I can't. And you mm-hmm. can cross over and cuff the ball, and you can send the lane. You can do this. You can do that. But it's like, I don't play great defense on you. So now, when somebody plays great defense, hey, you 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 won, bro, because I can't do nothing with you. So I think that's what I kind of miss about it now because it's a little different. So now, when we see great defense, a little bit, we should celebrate a little bit more. Rather than just kind of like complaining, being like, well, we should see more of that, you know, man, shut up, bro. Except the fact that it's not going to be like that no more. And just embrace yeah. what we do have it. So that's kind of why I stand <laughs> with that, man. But I do kind of saw, saw a little bit more, you know, defensive uh, games, okay. a little bit more defensive, you know, presentations when we watch the game. But I'm not complaining, but it's just a little, you know, the old head and me kind of just reminisce about the back in the day stuff. No, nah, I feel it. Hey, I'm a defensive guy, as you know. That that defensive player of the year trophy. Oh, 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 wait, there, 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 there. That defensive player of the year trophy right there. <laughs> like I'm a defensive guy, and I enjoy seeing good defense. Like you guys, coach, you have my coach, my teammates. I get hype on defense, just like offense. If we rotate, if we point talking, locking stuff up, people can't get in the paint. You know, uh, messing their offense up, they can't run it. I'm hype. Like we locking stuff up. Let let go. Like I'm hype for that. Mm-hmm. So I love to see great, great defense too. So on the same way, I, I do wish we saw more of it. But <clears throat> the Heat, like the Heat and Celtics series, like you just said, I definitely thought it was going to be more of a battle. So we did get a couple games in there, but yeah. you know they had so many times they take a turn blowing each other out. It, it 
because you know it took some of it away. But yeah, but I saw a lot of the Heat games in the playoffs and overall the whole the entire playoffs. They were locking some up like it was a lot of mm -hmm. like plays where like like you said you know it's a lot more scrambles and stuff now because of the spacing of the game. You got guys that don't do nothing but sit corner. And so that guy mm -hmm. got to help. And then somebody got to rotate out and then scramble and rotate to his man. And we just moving. But the Heat are good at it. And then they good on ball defenders. So it makes for great it makes for great defense to watch. So I, I did enjoy them a lot of games. Same thing for the Celtics a lot of times when they did, like, lock in and sit down and guard. It seemed like they pick and choose the times that they did it. Yep. But yeah. I swear it's like they pick and choose. Like, oh, we need to stop. Like they, yep. they <laughs> like you know, it's weird. But I do like, man, I do kind of miss them days. But at the same time, like you said, you gotta accept the fact that it ain't gonna be that way no more. Now it's only a handful of great defenders in the league. So, but them guys is valuable at the same time. We just seen uh Pat Bell just get get his little contract in. You know, he's still relevant in the league. Marcus Smart, defense player of the year, man, still relevant. We still talk about Kawhi Leonard. We still talking about um. What's his name? The other a little guard similar to Pat Bell, but not Pat Bell. <laughs> um, we won't worry about it. There, there's there's guys in the league that lock up on D. Yeah, Rudy Gobert Drew. still in the league. You can't forget Drew. Drew. Oh my guy. Drew Holly, my guy. I love man, yeah. yeah. My, oh, yes, 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 yes. Drew. Guys like that still have a place in the league. So, like, mm -hmm. like you said, you got to appreciate them guys either way. Like, hey, they still do it. There's still guys in the league that play D, but – it's just not gonna be that way no more. Yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm slowly learning to you know embrace the the current way of things are and just not let go of what I, I grew up watching, what I used to have, but you know just accepting more of what the new is and just you know going with the new wave of stuff, man. So um, interesting interesting talk that I do want to have with you, man. Is like I said before, LeBron is in year twenty. He keeps saying he wants to keep playing until he can play with his boys. And I saw something, I think last week I saw, where he said he wanted to um, play with both of his sons. And I'm like, all right, Brian, you, you stretched that thing out from like two years to like four. <laughs> like, no, what we doing here, man? You pressing it now. So I'm like, now I'm not saying you can't play, but uh, ah, I'm pretty sure if you sign up, sign, want to sign a four year deal. There is plenty of teams that will take that deal in a heartbeat, but at the same time, man, it's just like, yeah, oh no, Brian, like you, you better play this last season. So I'm just I mean, mm. me in my mind, I'm taking it year by year at this point. So I'm just like, year twenty. All right, let's see what LeBron had this year. So, um, <laughs> with that being said, man, it's 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 ticking down of the Le LeBron James era and the Steph Curry's and KD's, Kawhi's, and all them going. Do you see anybody that's, that's possible being a face of the league? Is is there a potential guy that you see is just like, like we you, you talk you say it all the time, and the basketball guys always get us the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. I think it's the one time where it's looking a little shaky, bro. I don't know, man. So do you see anybody at the basketball guys is just like LeBron James? Mm -hmm. Who who is this for you? Do you? Who do you see this being right here? Uh, as much as I would love to just come out with a definitive answer, like you said, because the basketball guys, I do feel like the basketball guys do deliver that. I deliver that oftentimes. Like it's been, we we just seen it. We, it was you know they started the league. It was you know Bill Russell and Will and them, and then they transitioned to Kareem and uh Dr. J, and you know it was Kareem for a while. Magic Johnson came into the league with Kareem. Kareem was on the back backslide. Magic came up. It was Magic and Bird. And then as Magic and Bird was declining, Michael Jordan came up. As Michael Jordan was declining, we saw Shaq and Kobe come up. And then it was Kobe for a while. And then we saw LeBron come in during Kobe's time. And as Kobe was on decline, LeBron was on his way up. He started winning his rings. It, it, it's always happened. And so yep. we might not be able to see it right now, but, like, but if I had to guess with some of the guys we got in the league now, of course I got to throw my boy Giannis in there. He, he uh, numero uno to me. Like, 
I feel like Giannis could definitely be the face of the league. The only thing I'm really holding him back is the fact that he's a foreign player. Like, he's foreign. And so, therefore, a lot of people don't know a lot about him. I, I heard Emmanuel uh, Acho that's on Fox Sports. He said he was like, like the thing that makes LeBron a good, good face of the league is I, I feel like I know LeBron. I know I know LeBron. I know where he's from. I know what high school he went to. I know his mama name. I know his kids name. I know his wife name. And it's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do know all of those things. And they said, where, where is Giannis from? Greece. All right, what city in Greece? Greece. <laughs> all right, what's his mom name? What, what's his girlfriend name? What's his kid's name? Greece. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all we know. It's Miss, it's Miss Greek Freak and uh Baby Greek Freak. That, that's Baby Greek on. Freak. <laughs> Come on, man. Like we we just don't know a whole lot about him outside of who, you know what we see and what he even told us. And you know he has a little um a movie out now about um how, you know his his come up and like his brothers and family and stuff on Disney Plus. I I, I myself haven't even watched that yet. I want to. But I'm his, I'm one of his biggest fans. I ain't watched this. I can't say nothing. But but you know we just don't know a whole lot about him as a person and his past and stuff like that. So that kind of holds him back. And then right behind Giannis, who could, who else could possibly be it? Would probably I have probably had to say Luca. And it's the same thing with Luca. It's like he not he not from America. So it's kind of the same issue. And then, but after Luca, we want us. We we really wanted to believe it was gonna be Zion. We wanted it to be Zion. The league wanted it to be Zion. Like it was obvious. We wanted it to be Zion because it's like Zion got the everything. He got what LeBron got. That it factor, strong, fast, athletic, could do like crazy stuff. Could do anything. You know, it's just gonna take some development for him. But then he get in the league and he can't stay healthy. So now it's like, ah, is it gonna be Zion? Like. Can we trust Zion to be the face? So you never, uh, you know, it's just it's up in the air right now. But Giannis got to be number one for me if I had to put it in order. So what, what about you though? Who who is the next man up for to be the face of the league in your opinion? Yeah, I gotta. I think I have to agree in that order too. Um, and I think everything you said is exactly what I was about to say. Like. <laughs> It's like in my mind, there's a, a perfect equation for the face of the league, and I think mm-hmm. there's nobody. Let me say this first: nobody is just like you said. It's nobody that I strongly just be like, "Oh, it could be him," because nobody has the perfect. Nobody fits the perfect equation, which I think, which is why it's a big question mark when we look at this. So, like, of course, there has to be a level of market to marketability to you. You have to be able to be marketable, basically. Mm-hmm. All three guys fit that criteria. Like people like Giannis. Giannis has a certain personality to him. His game is marketable enough to where he can do something with that in commercials and stuff, whatever. Moving forward, um, Luca has that. We, we like him. He has a certain charm to him. He's certain. He a little smooth operator. You know what I'm talking about. Like he has certain mm-hmm. certain it to him. They just like man, I like Luca. Like even if you can't stand him, you gotta like him, respect him a little bit. So he has that. Zion has. He has a great energy. He's very optimistic and positive. He almost like a a kid on the inside. And Giannis has that too, with like a kid and it's like a big lovable factor mm-hmm. to him that you just can't, you know what I mean? You can't you can't fake it, you can't replicate it. It's just like that smile just like I was having a bad day then he I was say he had just had a bad day. He smiled at me. I'm just like you brighten up my day, Zion. Thank you. He has that that <laughs> thing about him to where it's just like he has that. So yeah. um then game wise he he's a walking highlight. There's no need to go down that rapper. We already know how that goes. Um, right. You have to be a winner. Like you, we can't promote losers. That's, That's obvious. Part of like, it. So, Giannis is the only winner that we have. He's <laughs> won a ring, MVPs, all these awards. The other two, you ain't got none of that, bro. So, that's what it kind of cuts you out at. Um, and then lastly, like you said, that that's missing with Giannis and Luca. We have to have a certain connection to the guys. And there's this certain off the court connection that we have to build with you. And we can't connect with somebody that's, you know, from Greece, somebody that's from Slovenia. That's hard to connect with. Yeah, you, you're mm-hmm. black, uh, Giannis, and that's cool, but I can't relate to that. You know, yeah, Luca might be a, uh, you know, Caucasian white guy, however he's, you know, labeled, but 
you're not really that relatable to the guys here. It's just it's a disconnect. And so Zion, yeah, we connect with you, but you fell in the other areas, bro. Like you're not healthy, so you can't even play. You're not winning because you're not playing. So what are we talking about here? You feel me? So nobody has all the stuff put together. I think it's one of the things I'm probably missing from my equation. I have to think about it, but like those are the most important things I could think of right now that I remember right now of what makes mm. the best player. Not necessarily the best player in the league, but like the face of the league. It's the difference between the best player in the game and the face of the game. Well, it was an argument for a while was Tim Duncan and Kobe the best guy in the late game, but Tim Duncan's not marketable. Nobody cares about the bank shot. Nobody cares about the quiet guy who just <laughs> puts up 30 and 12 <laughs> in his sleep and don't say nothing. Like, that's not... It's not a face to lead. Like that's eh, you know, it's cool, but eh. yeah. You know, basketball guys like it, but to the average fan, it's like I don't want to watch that. Like the Spurs not very play. excited. Yeah. You know, you're missing that, so it's not marketable. So Kobe had that. He's gonna talk trash, he's gonna, you know, mama mentality, black mamba. He's gonna give you a dunk, he's gonna give you highlights, he's gonna give you all this stuff. He's gonna yell and scream, get the fans involved. Then he's in LA. So it's like so many stuff that went for him to make him the face of lead, whether you like it or not. So nobody else has that right now, man. I think that each guy has at least one strike against them from that little criteria that I made up of what makes the face of the league. So mm. you could argue Giannis could be the best player in the game, but can he be the face of the league? That's another conversation. You know, like if LeBron was down the game right now, you could argue Steph Curry would be the face of the league. You, I think he probably would be. You know, he fits the criteria of all that. A winner, he's marketable. People love him and like him on and off the court. Like, it's just, it's easy for him. Like, I think he will be the first league one for LeBron. But it's, it's just tough to say that for anybody else in the next generation because they're, they're missing certain holes in their resume to, you know, qualify for that position. But I don't know, man. I think one guy that we could have, can't have that discussion is Ja. But yeah. like I said earlier, he fits the AI mode. And... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> can't really the face of the league ain't really what we looking yeah. for. In that. <laughs> yeah. Once again, you can be the best player in the game. That, that's not what's one conversation. Face of the league is uh, we ain't trying to uh, not not you, sir. Um, you can win the MVPs. You can have a couple of rings. Oh, but face of the league, no. Same thing for KD. KD winner. Oh, we love him. But we don't love the person. People don't like the person anymore. You know, people Katie's mm-hmm. become more of a hater figure than like a respected figure in basketball. So Thanks. I love job, but ah, face of the league, my guy. Ah, it's, so. it's funny though because I didn't play with some jobs like like obviously not the talent that Jai has, but like I've had teams that I've been on where like you know. I might necessarily have not been the best player, but I am definitely like the most personable is the word we use. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I have the personality, like I, I'm a people person. Like, like I like to talk, like to laugh, like to joke, you know, I'm good with stuff like that. So like, I've always been the guy that my coaches be like, Hey Nelson, this event is going on. I want you to go. So you can represent the basketball team or, hey, you uh, you and so-and-so, I want y'all to come to dinner with these guys. They are boosters, this and this and this, whatever. I've been that guy for a while now because it's like, man, you know, you want a guy who you can trust to represent your program, represent, you know, what y'all stand for and make it give y'all a good look, you know. And so when you're talking about the entire NBA and the face of the league, you might not want to use John Moran. <laughs> just be real. <laughs> you might not want to use John Moran. They knew they didn't want to use AI. They knew that. They, yeah, I'm, yeah. There was a meeting somewhere. It was like <laughs> Allen Iverson, like on the come up, like he liked the best players. Should we talk about having them and do some things? They probably looked at him and it was like, nah. <laughs> they probably didn't even talk to him, just looked at a picture and was like, nah, nah, we like nah. we're not going to use that, uh, Allen. What they call them, Allen. We're not going to use Allen. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, you know, it's just one of them things, man. You, he, he just not the guy. Not saying that, that's not saying nothing about Jaws as a person. Like, Jaws is a cool dude from what I can tell. Like, and everything I've yeah, seen. Yeah. Good dude, cool dude, real. And, you know, that's good. That's great. But when you talk about the face of the league, it's just he might not be the guy you want to use in that scenario. He fit that AI mode, like you said. Like, good for the culture. Let's say that. He good for the culture. Yeah. The culture yeah. of basketball, he good <laughs> for it. Great. But talking about the face of the league, that's a different thing. So, you know, you might want to go with somebody else. So, yeah, so we're, we're not trying to belittle y'all. Like, I know people all. don't like we, we're here, we understand. I feel like this is, this is a certain people listening, they understand. But for the people who might be a little lost, um, for any parents, you have <laughs> if you have especially you have multiple kids, if you're a teacher, you, you got a classroom, right? If uh, if you're working, you have different co workers, there are certain co workers who. If you had to have an interview, oh, you, you're going to interview one, two, three, and four. Easy, because they're, they're social, they know how to talk, and you know, all this stuff. The rest of y'all, you're a great worker, but yeah, you, you're not like me. I'm a good worker, but I'm not, I don't want to be in front of cameras. I'm like the Tim Duncan, bro. I just want to hoop and go home. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I will talk and interview stuff, but like, I'd rather not, you know what I mean? Like, just let me hoop and go home. I'm like, I'm like Kyrie. I'm just here for basketball, bro. Marshawn Lynch, I'm here so I don't get fined. Like, <laughs> can I do it? Yeah, I could be good in doing it, but do I want to? Eh, not really. Then you got some people who are just like, no, you're not allowed to touch the microphone. I don't, I don't care if it's off. Don't touch the microphone. No, no, nowhere near it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if it's off. <laughs> I don't care if it's unplugged. The battery's off. It's dead. I don't care if it's broke. You ain't touching nothing over there. Like, stop it. <laughs> you got some of them people, right? Right. And then you have some. Who are um, within the business? They're great, you know. But you don't want that image to be portrayed outside of what you have going on, because it might be a little misunderstood of what this whole entity represents. So, for my parents, you certain kids, you know, they're not bad, but they're a little misunderstood outside looking in. For my teachers, outside looking in, the classroom would look crazy if you had kid number Z over here represent the whole, you know. A classroom, you know, if you if you're at a job, you know, for students that's in classrooms, like a couple kids over here, they're good and they, they're great. Some some kids they're okay, but they just missing that one little thing that should you know put them in this category. Some kids that should definitely know. And so, job fits that middle group. You know, it's something that he's he's missing that do not quite fit that next little category of guys to, or people represent the. The whole thing. So love y'all. Like I just said before, early in the episode, probably my favorite player in the game right now of, of young guys. But certain certain thing to be representative, you know, it's a little too. He doesn't have that PC ness to him. He's he's gonna tell you right, what it is, how right. it is, how it feels. He doesn't have the clean up. You know, if if uh, something happened right now with America, right? There's a certain political correctness that you have to do to clean up situations. John's not the guy who's going to send up to clean up a situation. Mm-hmm. He can be like, hey, man, forget all y'all. Y'all messed up. All right. Like, hold on, brother. No, brother. They, you, you know it. I almost say what needs to be said. Y'all scared. So he messed up. Where my money at, bro? Like, hold on. That's not. No, I, don't I don't care. <laughs> I don't care, bro. He messed up my trophy. He messed this up. What's up? And like, hold on, bro. Like, it's true, ain't it? I mean, yeah, it's true. All right. So in the discussion. That, that's that's what Jai is. He he's just gonna tell you what it is, how it is, when it could be said. Man, you that ain't that's not, do it. <laughs> not every time, man. So that's that's who Jai is. That's why he's not facing the material. Not saying mm. that he can't be a great player, but I don't think he has the fluff and the fakeness and the filter to be appealing to the whole audience and demographic of NBA fans. So that's what we're saying, Jai can't. Be in the face of the league, so I'd have to clear that. I know, I know we're here, but for mm-hmm. the population, the percentage was a little lost, you know. So <laughs> I had to clear that up. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man. Um, so if you had to pick, man, you have to pick who who could be like. If you had to pick one guy, you going with Giannis? I think I am going with Giannis. If I got to pick one guy, he's played most, been the healthiest, and been the most successful. So I think I got to go with him. I got two sleeper picks, two sleepers. Mm-hmm. 
that I feel like one definitely has potential to be there. And mm-hmm. one is very questionable because he's missing the winning part and he's younger. So Jason Tatum, I'm not, I'm not being biased by saying this. He's just the criteria of what I said before. No, you good. Jason Tatum, he's, he's been winning. He has certain personalness to him. He's marketable. He has the whole, you know, between him being a dad and Deuce and a good looking guy, like, you know, he has That's stuff true. in his favor to where he could be that that next play. He just doesn't have as big of a push behind him. I think it's kind of holding him back. And he's in Boston too, so that kind of hurts. But mm-hmm. this next guy, I think Trump Zion in the category of likability. I'm talking about everybody that we name. Luca too. Mm-hmm. Anthony Edwards. If you don't like Ant Man, if you don't like Ant Man, something's wrong with you, bro. That man is hilarious, and he he. <laughs> that, I love that dude, bro. I love that dude, bro. Man, he's so funny to be like, and he's so. I think we like because he's so southern. He from he from Georgia. I think he like from Atlanta, but he's so Georgia like. He's so south, and that just make yeah. it even funny. It's like, man, this dude don't care where he at. He gonna be Georgia. <laughs> Yeah, real I love it. Man, I remember I watched Ant Man. Ant Man played uh, a YouTuber that I watch a lot. Play, he played him in Madden, and you know he talking all type of trash. This man beforehand, the YouTuber get to spanking and out the gate. They played the first game, beat him. He's like, man, I knew I should have used Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he said, man, don't worry about it. Bro. I'm getting Aaron Rodgers next game. Got Aaron Rodgers, got whooped again. So he started getting whooped and quit the game. He said, all right, bro, that's it, bro. Dude said, what, man? He said, that's it, bro. He said, oh, you got to go? He said, yeah. <laughs> said, all right, man. <laughs> I'll see you later. He said, yeah, man. All right. <laughs> he got off the stuff. He left. <laughs> I said, dang. <"Damn." laughs> he was sick. Boy, I said, boy, this man just like any dude I know. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> He's just like oh, every dude around the block, man. He ain't no different, man. He's so, that made me laugh. He made me laugh so hard. He just left. He's like, all right, bro. I got you. <laughs> Click, yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, 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 he got that like ability to him. But he in Minnesota, so that kind of hurt him. But, you know, they just got Rudy Gobert. And they got they got a little squad going for him right now. So, you know, we'll see what they do with it. So, if they get a little more successful, you know, you might be on to something. I think he's my – I think if I had to pick somebody, he's my sleeper pick of everybody. I think – Jason. it's him and Jason Tatum I kind of go back and forth because Jason Tatum got everything but that personality. But Zion – I mean, not Zion, but Ant has the personality just on steroids. And he, he, I think he trumps everybody in that category, bro. Like, you just can't help but not – like, I feel like if this man was not playing basketball, he would still find some way to be popular because his personality is just, like, it's there. You can't help but not like him. Like if he retired right now, he would still be beloved by so many people because he's just that type of guy. Like he has a Charles Barkley likeness to him, to where you just like him for a little bit, you know. He's not as uh, controversial as Chuck, but like you love Chuck, like there's certain lovability to Chuck, you know what I mean? And he has that a little bit to him. But so Ant Man has that, and I just feel like if he can start winning, and the more the general fan, the average fan, start knowing who he is, and you know he can pull that together. I feel like he's my dark horse pick, you know. So, um, I I, I got to throw him in the, in in the ring, man. So him and Tatum, it's like uh, Ant Man number one. I don't know, it's one and one a for me, man, because I can go back and forth. Like I said Ant Man has a personality, but Tatum has everything <laughs> but the last little personality push. So that's that's those are my dark horse picks, man. But Giannis is is the easy, safe, obvious pick, you know. So. Yeah. Man, hey, I would be happy though if it was Ant. I can't lie. I'm glad you said that. I would be happy if it was Ant. Just because, you know, you're Georgia boy. I'm from Alabama. We're from Alabama, but he's from the South. You know, I feel like we relate. Yeah. That we basically cousins. You feel me? Basically. <laughs> I don't know basically, no basically. You know what I'm saying? We basically cousins. You know, he's right from across the bridge. <laughs> but yeah, I would be happy if it was Ant. But, you know, I th- like you said, Giannis is probably just a safe pick right now. But we'll see, man. You never know. Never know. Yeah, I feel like um, I think it will be Ant Man. I'm, I'm I'm going on a record saying I think it will be Ant Man at some point. I think he'll if he's not the face of the league, he's gonna be like a almost not like an Allen Iverson, Tim Duncan second hand face of the league, but almost like, like a LeBron, Steph Curry. 
Yeah, it's like that. So say it's like, uh, say it is, no, nah, I can't say job. Let's say it is Zion, right? Because they're about the same age. They're around the same age. Mm. Zion might be 22, 23. Ant-Man's like 20, 21. So it's about the same age. Yeah. So I feel like if it is Zion being the face of the league, Ant-Man's like right there to being like, you got one little mess up, bro, and I'm, I'm, I'm switching on you. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's where Ant-Man can be. And I feel like it could be. I think I honestly think we might get to a place where we might have this might be weird, but like not have a face or faces. Mm. So it might be like on the non-American side, you might have like a Luca. Then on the American side, you have uh yeah, let's, let's go with Ja since he's a guard. So you might have like a dual face of lead type of thing. You know what I mean? Like mm. We love and like, like and like we don't like Luca. Luca's very likable. We, we love him, but he's mm-hmm. able to branch out to that other side because the NBA is a global uh, brand now. Like you can't tie us down to just America. We've been past that since the nineties. So I feel like we might get right. to a place where it's more of a dual or multiple face of the league type of thing. Where because we like we don't have one guy who's just like it's him. So I feel like we might kind of have something like that to where it's multiple guys kind of sharing it in a weird way and one guy might be more a little more prominent than the other but i feel like overall we might have like two or three guys who just like the face or faces of the league i don't know mm. i mean it's kind of like that now you got Braun who the face but then you still got your Steph curry your kd your Giannis, you know guys that you know the nba gonna still tell you every little thing that they do and, you know, keep up with their, you know, they still have a huge fan base, stuff like that. So you still have that. But you might be right as far as, like, an American side and, like, a foreign side. I feel like that it would be big for the league because, you know, we won't know, but, like, Luka might be LeBron to people in Europe or, you know, stuff like that. And same thing for Giannis. So, you know, it, it, the game has changed, like we've been saying. So it might just be on that type of time in the future. Yeah, I think I don't know, man, because it's, it's such an odd time. Like we always knew, like we knew when Kobe was 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 hooping, he was balling. We automatically knew, bro. At some point in time, this is LeBron's league. We knew it. Like before it was time, we knew. Uh, it's just a matter. Of, it's not if, it's when. When Jordan was doing his thing, it's not if, when. If we, all, we always knew. Bird and Magic knew when it. Oh. At that time ticking, Bird. What's up with it? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and pass down that Jer- that, uh, that Jordan boy. He got it. Everybody we already knew. They, they, torch, they, they, we knew the sand clock, the sand, the uh, the, the sand in that time clock was flipped over, and that time was ticking. We knew the last grain hit. Here you go, Mike. Mike time flipped over. Here you go, Kobe. Kobe time flipped. Here you go, LeBron. LeBron holding that thing tight because we don't know right now. <laughs> a lot of sand in that hourglass. <laughs> it's holding on, boy. That boy is leaking grain by grain. We don't know what's going on, man. So I just, I just feel like we just we in an odd spot, man. So I don't know if it's it's gonna be a longer delay because it's really a big if. It's not, it's not a win with anybody. If Ja can be a little bit more PC, if Zion can actually play. If Ant Man starts winning, if Tatum has this, if Luca had, like, it's too many ifs. If Giannis stays at this level, like it's too many ifs. So there's nobody that's guaranteed to be a win. This happens. So it's just, I don't know. We we in an interesting spot. Excuse me, as far as that goes, man. But um, mm. anything else you want to say? If we get to this last part, man. Probably the most interesting part of this conversation. No, oh, man, I think we say everything we kind of need to say. It's just, you know, times are changing. And the young guys are coming, but we just don't know who the guy is yet. So, it's coming, though. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm going I'm to throw my little hat in the ring saying Ant-Man might get that thing. So, ah. Mm. And I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to stay with my boy. <laughs> That's my Dark Horse pick, man. So, cool. um, we'll see, man. But. Ah, wish I had a hat. That's one over there. Bro. I ain't gonna put it on, but it's time to put that GM hat back on, brother. Uh, it's one episode earlier. Early, it's an old, old episode. We had a, 
a GM type of, of vibe of what we had going on. So we, we pulling the hat back on, man. Mm. So we're going to do a 25 and under draft. 25 and under, not just under 25. So um, we're going to draft six guys mm-hmm. for our magical team of superstar young guys in the league, man. So um, you're picking your five guys, your different positions, and I give you a six, man. That guy could be in a position you want to, man. So, um, <laughs> ah, you ready? I'm ready. I've, I've been ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, who gets first pick? Who gets first pick? I, I, hey, it, it's the B Ball Jones podcast. So B Ball Jones get first pick, and I, I, I go next. I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. I, I even got me a little pencil and paper to write down like who you get, who I get, just so I make sure I remember everything correctly. I got you. I'm going to put them on my little thing. Oh, man. All right. So the first overall pick with the B-Ball Jones 25 and under draft. This is so tough. Oh, um, man, this is tough. I'm trying not to be biased to guys I really like and – I think I might do it anyway, because I don't care. Um, <laughs> I know all that, bro. <laughs> oh man, this is tough. The first, because it's like the first overall pick, man. You can't just like, can't be. Can't biased, sell it. It's, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> no, yeah. But I don't feel like this is a bad pick at all, man. I'm I'm kind of scared because this, this other guy I do want to pick. He's on my my board for real, and it's just it's certain stuff I don't like, but. I'm gonna go Jason Tatum first overall pick, man. I'm, I'm gonna keep it in the in the family with the Celtics. So, first right. overall pick, man, Jason Tatum from the Boston Celtics, man. I'm going with him first overall pick. I'm taking Deuce too. He's a uh, it's a, it's a dual pack. I'm taking Deuce too. <laughs> Deuce pack. They they come together. <laughs> Combo deal. So yeah, first pick, man. Going Jason. All right, man. Solid first pick. I expect it. Uh, you know, I expected you to pick him out of out of everybody. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, one or two guys, I expected you yeah. to get number one. But since you took him, I went to the other guy I expected to go number one. And so with the second pick in the B Ball Jones twenty five and under draft, gotta go with uh, the, uh, that man Luka Doncic. Man, you know, like you gotta go Luka. You know, consider probably consider the best. Player twenty five and under, but you know yeah. I, I definitely understand JT. I ain't like JT no slouch. You know what I'm saying? I take JT seven days out of the week and twice on Sunday. So, but give me Luca with my first pick in the draft. Man. That's that's what really my debate was, man. I was um, Luca don't play defense for me, man. That's my biggest thing. So I'm just like, that's true. Hey. Hey. <laughs> That that's that's my only angle. I was like, ah, should I? I wanted him as my point guard, but I was just like, ah, it's just, mm, I ain't know, man. So mm-hmm. that's what kind of my hang up was on him. Like, you can't just play a matter of defense and just giving up thirty balls in your face. But I had I had a backup plan just in case I did end up getting him, you know. But it's it's all good, you know. A, a good GM has has multiple plans. You feel me? So um, absolutely right. So second overall, oh, and I second oh my second pick, third overall pick. Mm-hmm. It's really debatable here. Um, I'm gonna say him for my my third pick. Mm-hmm. All right, so I have a debate between these two guys. Um, all right, I think I think my other guys are safe. I'm gonna go D book. I'm taking D book off the board. D book, hey, solid pick, solid pick, not bad. I'm taking D book. I got a solid, solid wing play. Got two, two firefighter. I mean, uh, flamethrowers. <laughs> you know, I get a thirty piece from the from book, a thirty piece from Tatum, and they sleep, so they can lock them and play D when they want to. You know, so mm. solid, solid wing performance right now. So, uh, who you got for your second pick, man? My second pick and the fourth overall pick, I am going to go with Ant-Man. 
I'm gonna take Ant Man. I want him to be my two guard with Luca. I think that's somebody who can run with Luca, get a bucket. They can trade, you know, they can go back and forth being the guys to get off, you know. And I think Ant, I think Ant will be okay, you know, let let Luca take over for a while and be and handle the ball. But I also think I can trust Ant to like if Luca kick out, you know, he can knock down this tray ball. And I also think I can trust Luca to let Ant have time to, you know, like ISO ball. Like let Ant have this one. Like he got it going. Let's get about that. Kind of like Jalen Brunson, but times 10. Yeah. You know? So I'm going with Ant Man for, for, for my next pick, man. So it's back to you. So you sitting with JT and D Book. And now who you who you want next? I was a little nervous, but I feel very confident now because uh this is a guy who I would have got killed for taking first, but mm-hmm. if uh one thing I kind of want to get into with this with this topic is uh, if you had to build a team around a certain player, who would you pick, right? Mm. And this guy was probably be my number one pick for that, just for that conversation. And okay. I'm taking him third overall. And bam, 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 out of bio. You would build a team around bam. The reason why I would say bam is because the way the league is going, you got to switch everything. Mm-hmm. So defensively, he's locking one through five up. Like he he arguably could have been defensive player of the year conversation last year, you know. For sure. Um, he probably is the guy behind the Heat's defense. And the Heat arguably has the best defense. So the best guy on arguably the best defensive team, you know, Marcus Smart was the guy for the Celtics. I feel like Bam is that guy for the Heat. So defensively, he fits his age timing. I think he's like 6'10 or somewhere around the height, maybe 6'9. And offensively, mm-hmm. Right now, he can, he's kind of a Draymond type of guy, you know, but he can develop and grow to be a better option offensively. So he doesn't mind, you know, not scoring and being like the main focal point, which is great because Taylor and Book being my, my guys, like you, you just, you know, you know, clean up, clean up on aisle three when they get done, you know, so. Clean up on aisle three. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they miss, you know, he get, he's there for rebounds. So he's a little bit of a do-it-all guy. Like he's like a – a Draymond, he's an elevated Draymond, is what I'll say. You know, he's a, he's a step up from Draymond, so uh, mm. that's why I'll take Bam. Like, he's a guy who I would build a team around because what you need, you need you need assists, okay, boom, Bam can give you that. You need points, he can give you that. Rebounding, defense, whatever, he can give you that. So, he might not be the sexy pick as far as like the first overall pick, but to build a team around somebody, that's who I give my trust into. So, that's why I picked Bam. Like it, it would have been, it would have been killed if he was my first overall pick. But that's mm-hmm. my big man, so I'm going with Bam as my uh my third pick. Excuse me, bless you. Uh, thank you. But uh, no, nah, Bam definitely a solid pick. I actually was hoping to take Bam later on in the draft. That's my big, but it's okay. I got backup bigs. <laughs> I know who you picking that's for funny. your big. I know, I know who you picking. Right, you probably. Two do. It's two options. I know you picking. I know you picking one of those two. If you don't, I'll be super surprised. <laughs> you probably do know, right? It's all right though. But. <laughs> so my next pick, uh, third o- my third pick, uh, sixth overall. I am gonna go with hopefully healthy Zion Williamson. I knew you was picking him at some point. I yeah, I'm going with Zion. Zion plays the way I like to play. I'm really thinking of the team as if, like, I'm running the team. Like, I'm coaching it. Because, like, I'm going to give me some athletes. We going to run. Luca and Zion, one of y'all get the board, push it. We run it. We, like, we trying to get a bucket. Every time we get the ball, we run it. We push it down their throat. We trying to get straight to the rim. Or we trying to get in the lane, kick out. Guys fill in the lane. We good. Let's do it. Like, I'm trying to play fast-paced basketball. You know, and I also think Zion to help Luca out a little bit. Like Luca get blown by Zion back there. You know, he has led it. He gonna help you get some stops. You know, I feel mm-hmm. like Zion if he can stay healthy and possibly lose a little bit of weight. I feel like Zion could be a great defender if he put his mind to it. But you know, we haven't seen enough of Zion to really know. But you know, with all things, but you know, included and with everything we do know, I still think he'd be solid on defense. So. 
give me Zion Williams with my with my third pick. Yeah, he, he was definitely on my board, man. He he could have arguably been like a top three pick, a top two pick, but mm. he's such a huge question mark, bro. It's like, yeah, you draft him, but is he gonna be there? Is he gonna play? So Thanks. and then we don't fully know what his his ceiling is gonna be. You know what I mean? He might end up just being like an energy type guy where he just he's almost like a, a Kenneth Reed almost, if you remember him. Where he mm-hmm. just he's just the energy type of guy. He's just there for like almost like a, a bigger Nate Robinson where he's just there for energy. He's going to give you a full out sprints and run the floor and, you know, whatever. And he might be like a, a Lamar Odom type of guy where he can't be a best player night in, night out. But in a seven game series, he might be the best player in two of those games, or he might not be necessarily the best player, but he gives you a really solid game to amplify what Kobe did. So, yeah, like you said, when you're a teammate before, like, I mean, you went off for 50, but I had the, the 10 blocks. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. something like that. I feel like, I mean, uh, Zion could be the type of guy to where um, uh, Brandon Ingram is the guy. He had a great game, but Zion could have easily just been player of the game, too. I mean, he might be that, that type of guy. So, yeah, I'm with I don't that. know, man. He's a big question mark. So, he was definitely on my board, but uh, mm-hmm. uh yeah, he is more. He's more of a uh, question mark for me. So I'm just, I don't know, man. But um, solid pickup, though. I like Zion. Solid pickup. But uh, fourth, my fourth pick, my fourth pick. All right. He was. He's on my board for sure. Um, this is my uh plan for if I pick Luca, right? Mm-hmm. So he's my kind of my uh I don't know how he would have worked out together with Luca, but I feel like it would have worked. And this guy's killed right now. He's not the most popular guy, but he can play. I don't care. Give me Ben Simmons. My fourth pick. Ben Simmons. That I hey, he was definitely on my board. I'm taking I'm taking big Ben off the board, man. That's my guy. So um I don't know who's gonna score against us between Bam and Ben Simmons. Um but Y'all have fun trying to figure that out because Ben Simmons locking up anything one through five. Any guard try to come through, we locking that up because he's 16. And if you want to switch that pick and roll, you can. You're just going to have Bam next on you. So, you know, got to get it how you live get on this defense. So, you got two perennial all-defensive team type of guys and two guys who believe they're defensive player of the year type of guys. So, yeah. that's – that's ah, that's – I like, I like that little one-two punch on defense, man. So, my fourth pick is Ben Simmons. Nah, I like that. That's definitely a solid pick for your team. Just looking at them. Definitely, you got a good mix of offense and defense. And so, I think that's good. That's going to be great. But you lacking the spacing as of right now. I will say that. JT JT and D-Book playing with Bam and Ben. That's, that's something, but it ain't everything, you know. But that, it's definitely a good mix of offense and defense, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, so with my next pick, oh, now next pick got to go with my boy. I think you probably know who I'm finna get, but I got to go with my boy, Jared Jackson Jr. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> got to go Jared Jackson Jr., man. I, I love him, man. He's my guy. He, he, my, he my kind of guy, man. He going to give you what you need. And it's, it's shooting, it's developing, so, you know, I, I'm glad for that, too. So he can still create some space, and especially because Zion is not a great shooter. And then he's still young, athletic, can run. You know, and he's going to play some defense, you know. He's going to block shots. Uh, average almost two blocks a game and still average 16 points. You know what I'm saying? So good, good, solid guy. You get guy, kind of guy you win with, I feel like. So mm. oh, I had to pick my boy, man. Give me Triple J, man. Jerry Jackson Jr. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew at some point he's, he's, he's going to be – you're a big, you're starting five big, or you're going to pick him as your six man. So I'm just like, I'm waiting on when he's going to get picked. Yeah, once I took I Bam him. off, I knew he was either going to be him and Bam, or once I took Bam, you're going to have him. So I'm just like, yeah. some way he's getting picked. That's your boy. So yeah. that's a good pickup, yeah. though. I feel like he fits. And then, like, the reason I like him so much because he can do a little bit of everything, but he's like seven foot, seven one. Like, that's a tough part, bro. Like, Usually guys like him is like a Bam who's like 6'9", 6'10", maybe 6'8". Now, he's all that in seven foot. So, 
that's that's a good pickup, bro. Um, all right, let me let me figure this out, man. Because so far Your my draft is going it's, it's going according to plan. I knew Luke was probably going to get picked off. That's why I thought about taking him first, but it's all good. Um, you're right. I do need some spacing. Um, luckily, Bam can play a little bit outside, you know, so I'm not overly concerned with that, man. But, um, mm. oh, man. I like this guy, but he got a little – I'm questioning what he fit well on this team with the ego. Mm. That's an excellent point. Like, because you got you got to think about it, bro. Like, this is this is a, a bounce between Jason Tatum and D Book's team. Like, obviously, like this is those two guys getting the ball. Like, hands down. Like, first option, second option, boom. Ben Simmons, he For good. Sure. Bam, he's good. They gonna get in where they fit in. Ben Simmons, like here, bro. I don't. We all know Ben Simmons is pass first. I'm not finna, I'm not trying to trash him because he's on my team. But we all know Ben Simmons is pass first. We all know right. that for sure. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> Last time we saw him on the floor, he was definitely pass first. You know, pass everything. Pass first, second, <laughs> third. <laughs> but that's all the option. <laughs> you remember uh, <laughs> that? <laughs> there's this picture. Um, he used to have this little meme going back where it was uh. PlayStation controllers. Yeah, Xbox here once in a while too. Mainly PlayStation controllers. We'd be like different players uh controllers. So Kobe's every, all every button would shoot. Every single button would shoot. Oh yeah, I know what you're and talking then, about. <laughs> and it had one was like it kind of made me mad, but D Rose was like, get hurt. And I was like, bro, come on. Bro. Like, <laughs> I messed up though. Come on, man. <laughs> That's one of my guys too. So that hurt that hurt me a little bit here. Like, come on, man. But we know we all know Ben Simmons is, is pass like that's you know, all X buttons, <laughs> straight X. So <laughs> he, he, my team right now is mentioned very well. We do have a little spacing issue, which I'm trying to address. Mm. I'm not going to mention on air who I wanted to pick because I don't want to trash him. Mm. Either or actually, yeah, I ain't gonna mention him because I don't I don't want to trash him. That's not what I'm not about. All right. So. I'm debating between these two guys. <clears throat> you know what? I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little off the board here, man. Well, not off the board, but a little bit off of what people probably think. I'm gonna go Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole for the first five. I need some spacing, bro. Uh, I know. It's, I know. It's, know. It's, a, it's a little bit of a. It's a little bit ugly pick. Not. I don't say it's not a sexy pick. For the first five, and it's, it's other guys on the board I could have had, but like, I need yeah. some guaranteed shoot. I need some off the ball play. So I, I'm I'm gonna take Jordan Poole, man. It's he he killed my height a little bit because I was like, D books about six five, so I like six six five and up with everybody. So I, I love my tall team, but Jordan mm. Poole's like six three six four. So I ah, I need some space. I need some shooting. So I'm going to pool pool party, pool party. Love pool parties. <laughs> but nah, that's hey, I ain't mad at that. You picked them for the right reason. I'm not mad at all. But um So who you got, right, man? For my last starter, uh, I had to put some thought into this one because who could be the best fit for these guys that I got. And you know, I debated on if I was gonna make Jay uh, Jerry Jackson Jr. be the four and pick another big. Or if I was just going to go with another wing player and let, you know, let him kind of hold down the paint since I still got Zion. And so what I the conclusion I came down to was I'm going to pick another wing, but I'm going to pick a tall wing. So my last starter, I'm going to go with Brandon Ingram. Mm, so I'm going to go – yeah, I'm going to go B.I. I'm going to let him play the three. Yeah, so I got Luka. For my one, mm-hmm. my Ant Man, for my two, Bi, for my three, Zion and JJJ at four five. And so I feel like mm-hmm. that's long, that's athletic. That's how I want to play. That's how we run it. We go and lo- we long, athletic. We can run, and I feel like everybody in there can kind of shoot, with the exception of Zion. Zion probably my worst shooter, and I'm good with that. But like everybody in there can get a bucket, can get to the paint, can run the flow, can dribble a little bit, handle a little bit. I think we good. I think that we got a, a good little mix. So give me B.I. for that last one. 
I like that pickup, bro. Um, yeah, I like that. I like that. That's a that's a real solid pickup because I think Bi slept on for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, he he would have been on my board if um, maybe if I didn't get Tatum a book, he probably would have been like my next level of guys. I would have definitely shot at. So um, mm -hmm. I like Bi, man. He's super long, like you said. I don't know how tall he is. But he's long. That's all that matters, bro. He's like, I think I think he's about six six, maybe six seven. But his wingspan might be like eleven foot two inches, something like that, bro. But um, that man, he's no. <laughs> it's about eleven foot. So yeah, he's man, six seven. Man. Yeah, I, I thought so. He about six seven. So six seven. I think he probably has close to a seven two wingspan. Like seriously, he might have like a seven two wingspan. Like, seven three. I was close. Man, long. That's crazy because I'm six seven and I got long arms or considered to have long arms. Uh, so me and the same height, my wingspan is six eleven, and his wingspan is seven three. So imagine me and like you can't see my full arm length in the camera, but imagine me with five more inches of arms, <laughs> like <laughs> five inches. That's like crazy length. So yeah, that's. That's insane, but yeah, he definitely. I feel like he he also can help on D. You got a lot another long athletic wing. He can go so he can guard. I feel like we can switch and we can help Luca out because Luca and Ant Man aren't really great defenders. You know that ain't yeah. lost on nobody. But then you got Zion, you know Triple J and Bi, who all strong, fast, athletic, long. We getting the job done on the back end, so I feel like we good. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like on my end, you know, we lock we're locking everybody up. Like Jordan Poole is probably this. my Jordan Poole is probably my weakest defender. And he's not like a bad defender. You feel me? So he just if if you're gonna target somebody, definitely gonna be pool. Like that's kind of what my, my team is led to. But Ben Simmons at the one, we run at six ten, like he's getting everybody involved. You know, D book and Tatum at the two three. Actually, my bad I say that back. Pool at the two. And you got Book and Tatum at the three four, so we kind of we kind of a small team, but Ben Simmons makes up for that being my one. You know what I mean? So uh, we can switch pretty much everything. You know, kind of similar to what the Celtics did. We switched everything when, when Marcus Smart went off and Payton Pritchard. Anybody else come on? Uh, we just switched everything besides the one. So that's what I could do with this team defense. We switching everything two through five. Uh, you can get a forty ball from Tatum, a forty ball from Book. Bam, you saw the game. Then pool party starts splashing on everybody. It's a wrap, man. So that's your you X know, factor. <laughs> yeah, like he, he's it's, it's crazy, bro. Like offensively, you can have Jason Tatum. They think about it, bro. Jason Tatum going off of 30 balls. Crazy. Devin mm -hmm. Booker right there going off too. That's almost similar to like uh Clay and Steph right now. Like either one of them go off. That's why Jordan Poole is such a great fit because it's like oh, both y'all going off. Let me come off the bench. Let me get hot too. And it's a wrap, you know. So it's literally that's almost literally like what he be saying. Like, all right, let me get in here and get into action. <laughs> yeah, so he fits my team very well. He's just an odd fit because it's like the fifth pick, really. That's why it's kind of weird, but mm -hmm. he fits when you look at my overall roster. So, um, yeah, I really expected you to probably go him six man or him to be a some one eye six man. I really expect yeah. him to go right. There. But you pick him fifth. You know that's you know like you said it's a little weird looking, but you know it fit like you said fit the team. So. Gotta go for fit yeah. and not you know names all the time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh my actual team, like if we actually put a roll out of team, it'll probably be like a, a mix between we ain't finish it, we still got one more pick. But mm -hmm. if when you see my last pick of what I'll do, it makes a lot more sense to where it's like I can interchange more stuff, man. So let's go ahead and get that before I you know get too deep in that. So yeah, go uh, ahead. six man. Six man for my team. I'm debating on I wanted to pick a point guard, but I'm very undersized here because Ben Simmons from my point, and if he goes out, I feel good with Poole, Booker Tatum, you know, running my point. Even Bam kind of running my point, you know. So um, going big here just to back up for Bam. Mm. And I'm debating between two guys, and one of them I thought you were going to take. Mm. So I think I'm going to go – I'm gonna go DeAndre Aiden. I'm gonna go DeAndre, man. 
DeAndre Aiden. I ain't mad at I'm that. Aiden. I'm gonna take Aiden, man. He's he's a solid guy. I finally got some found about somebody over seven foot on my team, but he fits my team, bro. Like defensively, he he's great. He's he's locking it up, man. He did a great job against uh who they play in the playoffs last year. I forgot who it was. This uh, past season? Yeah. Uh who did the Suns play? They played the Pelicans out the gate and they beat them. And then they played man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, guys. But my point was, um, he did a great job defending against people. No, my bad. Excuse me. I'm thinking about the uh finals matchup he had against y'all. That's what I'm thinking about. The books, yeah. It was a fit series last year, but I might be many years now. But he did a great job against uh Greek Freak. And so the fact that he can defend a couple threes, maybe, but really the four or five, so he can lock that down. You know, so defense-wise, he fits my team perfectly. So now looking at my full six, now you see why pool party fits because I can go small ball and throw pool in at the end there, or I take pool out, throw Aiden in. So now I have Aiden, Bam, Book and Tatum at the wings, and then Ben Simmons at the one. So, you know, it's more of an interchangeable freelancing type thing if – if we're playing a bigger team, okay, Aiden, go in, do your thing. We're playing a smaller team, want to run a little bit more, okay, pool, go in. Now we can run a four. So uh, that's kind of what I was really looking for um, with my guys, man. So that's, that's a really good team for me. And we, we don't have the greatest spacing, you know, but we can we can spread the floor. You know, it's not like we just we just struggling for points. We, we can have, you know, Ben Simmons pushing. He's going to have pool party on one wing. You gonna have book on the other wing. Which shooter are gonna get the ball? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that's why I'm kind of looking with my with my team, and I feel like this is the championship winning team, and you know, this, this is a solid pick, man. So, uh, your comments and who's your sixth pick? Yeah, I'm not mad at Aiden. I I have expected you to go Aiden for your starting five B, because but in my mind I thought I might have Bam. Also, I was thinking about Bam heavy at least. So, uh, but you know, it, it doesn't surprise me that you took him. But uh, he definitely can help. You know, definitely a solid six man. Hey, ain't nobody mad about DeAndre Aiden being a six man at all. So, uh, but well, turn me off to Aiden. I feel like Aiden plays too soft sometimes. You know, that's just me personally. But you know, sometimes he can be a little soft in my opinion. So I, I wasn't, I wasn't planning on taking him. So. Mm-hmm. But so I, it, it, it ain't hurt me, but I ain't I ain't mad at it for you, is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I think I'm gonna go in the opposite direction that you went, you win another big to help out your big. I think I'm going in the opposite direction. I am going to take somebody that's almost, you know, somebody gonna be upset that we ain't take him first round, first, you know, start five. But you know, that could be said for a couple guys. Well, for my sixth man, I'm gonna go Trey Young. I'm gonna go, tra- I'm gonna go Ice Trey. Ice Trey the game. Yeah, I'm gonna go that's Ice a, Trey. That's a great pickup. Yeah, I appreciate it. I was debating between him and Ja because I didn't expect Ja to be here. I thought you was gonna take Ja, but then you end up taking Ben to you know you know you went defense, so I understand that too. But. Uh, I kind of have expected you to have Ja. So with them two still on the board this late in the game, I was debating between them two, to, you know, who I wanted to be my sixth man. Mm-hmm. So I thought about it. I said, okay, Ja might fit my style of, you know, pushing the ball, fast-paced, athletic gameplay. I think, you know, he does fit that. But I think with Trey, I think Trey give me the opportunity to – if one thing, my only great with Luka is I feel like sometimes Luka can be too ball dominant. And you know, kind of, kind of similar to LeBron. You know how LeBron can have guys turn into corner sitters. You know, like all right, watch out, let LeBron drive this. You know, he he gonna get by the first man. They gonna you know, suck the defense in. They gonna kick out to you, be ready type stuff. Sometimes Luka can have a little bit of that, but I feel like you know, it could be too much at times, and he mm-hmm. don't really defer enough, in my opinion. So, but you know. At the same time, he's never played with a Kyrie Irving level player, you know, or somebody like that, like Brian has or Dwayne Wade or whatever. 
So, you know, we'll see. But that's my thing with Luca. So, I feel like if Luca ever get that way or if Ant-Man not on, don't trade him now. Let Trey run the mm-hmm. one. Trey, a good facilitator, great facilitator. Then uh, almost led the league in assists. Uh, I don't think he ever actually led it, but he's been top five in assists like the last couple of years. And so I'm, I'm with that. Another great shooter. He, he ain't got to play no defense. We got the guys in there for defense. So none of my guards are great defenders, but <laughs> they, they all can get a bucket, and I'm with that. So that's that's what I'm going with, man. So Trey on Ice Trey, six man of the year. We start the campaign. <laughs> Brandon, you we got like the most we're gonna get hated on for this because we are definitely gonna get hated. First off, let me just rattle off why we're gonna hate on. First off, uh Trey Young is, is somebody six man. That's number one. We're gonna get hated on. That's the that. same. John Morant did not get picked up. That's number two. Yeah. Uh looking at the list of guys who I got who I thought we were gonna probably draft. But Mella Ball did not get drafted. He was on my board. But I got to see a little bit more. Fan. Like, I can't – I don't Same. trust them enough right now to be like, do I know for sure he's going to – like, what is his thing? Like, is he more of a shoot first? I know he is kind of a pass first type of guy, but, like, what is your mm-hmm. defense going to be like? Do you have the engine to really keep going? We don't, I don't know enough of him right now to really, like, take him over. God, talent-wise, superstar, he's, he's there, but he's not enough. You feel me? So, like him. I almost love him, but not enough to pick him over the guys I know I can get. So, uh, might get a little hate. I feel the same way. Yeah. So, Donovan Mitchell, he might, he might get a little, little. He might, he might get a little. You know. So, uh, I debated on between. So, my thing was, I was debating on between Luca. Like, I, if I, I, I ain't know if I was gonna get Luca or not. And I thought if you got Luca first, I was probably then gonna go jaw Trey Young. That was my original thought. But then when you left me Luca, I was like, well, I gotta take him. So I took Luca. Yeah. So then after taking Luca, I debated on Ant Man and Donovan Mitchell. And so then I was yeah. like, uh, pers- me personally, I think he'd go either way. Donovan Mitchell probably the better player right now, but uh, it could go, like I said, it could go either way. So uh, I went Ant Man just because, you know, I feel like Ant probably fit better with Luca. You know, Donovan kind of need the ball in his hands a lot. Ant need the ball too, but I feel like not as much as Luca. I mean, as Donovan, mm-hmm. he could kind of, he could be the guy waiting on that, that kick out for the tray ball. And so then went into Ant, and then the rest of my guys was wings. So I didn't, you know, I ain't had no need for Donovan. So then my sixth man, I could have went Donovan Mitchell at that point or somebody like that. But I was like, nah, I got to go between John Moran and Trey Young at this point. That yeah, was my thought yeah. process. They the, they the two best players left. So I'm going between yeah. one of them. So I just chose Trey. Yeah, I ain't mad at that. Like, for me personally, uh, like I told you, I was really debating for my first overall pick between Luka and Tatum because I didn't know who was going to pick first. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, if we were picking, I know he'll he'll probably pick Luca first. So my backup would be Tatum. But I went ahead and went home body, and I was going to build out, you know, like I said, I had a contingent plan just in case Luca was going either way. But Luca was on my board for sure. If for every reason a miracle happened and you left me Luca, I was second pick. Like, that's just. Like, oh, second pick. <laughs> <laughs> what were you talking about? <laughs> like, I, I have probably two, the, the, the two most talented guys. On my team, like you feel me, like it's just kind of like, like what are we doing here, you know? So I'll figure the rest mm-hmm. out after that. Like so that's kind of <laughs> my thought process. And then, um, like honestly, like I, I got my whole five I wanted besides Luca. Like that's the guys I really wanted. Um, but I, this my team probably fits better without Luca because, like you said, Luca can be ball dominant, and none of my guys are like they are ball dominant guys. They know they need the ball in their hands, but they know how to play off the ball too. And so. Yeah. There's not that's not, not gonna be any ego, not gonna be any like man, I ain't get my touch. Man, who cares, bro? Like that Devin Booker's going stupid right now. Like, go eat. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be no. like ego tripping. So everybody yeah. be cheering them on. So that's kind of looking at too. And defense, we locking everything up. Offense, any guy that can get on with the ball, he can get off without the ball or off ball too. So that's what I'm mm-hmm. kind of looking at with my team, man. So we fit very well. Um, we can run the floor defense. It's like it's nothing that we're lacking on, on my team. So um, that's that's why I feel good in my team, and I wanted Trey. I was really debating between Trey and um, Pool right there, mm-hmm. but that would have been a tough pick because it's like Trey Young, Devin Booker, and Jason Tatum. Like, ah, that's a little too much right there. So 
Mm-hmm. Like, I, feel I, need, I need more fit. I need more fit than just name. Like it would have been, it was sexy to be like, "Ooh, I got all three of them in my lineup." That's, that look, that looks good. When you throw them on the floor, we might be thinking too deep about this, but whatever. But put them <laughs> no, on the floor. Man. It's like <laughs> put them on the floor. A pool will fit better. So that's kind of how I was going with that, man. Uh, I had somebody else I thought about picking instead of pool, but I'm not trying to bash him right now. So I'll tell you off air, but. Uh, <laughs> Another guy that I really wanted was Jalen Brown. That would have been a, a smooth I thought guy. about him too. I thought about him too. But I feel like I don't know. I feel like I, I thought about him with my pick with Ant Man too. But I was like, nah, let's go young. Let's go Ant. Let's go Ant. I feel like you're good. Yeah. So yeah, man. And then another so, guy who I thought you were gonna pick was uh Jared Allen. For that reason, I was like, that might be up Nelson Alley. He might be a surprise six man or something if, if his team fold out that way. So I thought you would have picked Jared Allen as your uh, your final big. It's like for whatever reason, you know, I, I just thought that would have been somebody. Yeah, I thought about him too because uh, I was thinking about him with like Jared Jackson Jr. Because I was like, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, I was like, I was, I was debating on should I get a big, big, like should I, should I get a five man to go with Jared and he'd be the four, or should I go a little bit smaller and go, you know, athletes go you know, go, you know, bucket getters. So I chose to get bucket getters. I'm satisfied with that though. But I did think about Jared Allen also, like just to have another d- defender back there in a uh, solid shot block. But I was like, nah, let Jared handle. It. He good. He's great. He's good. <laughs> he got. So that's what I went with that. Yeah, man. I, I feel pretty good about my team, man. I feel like this is a, it's a championship winning team, man. But uh, you know, we, we're gonna let the people decide on who has the better five and or better six and who, you know, really took that team and just like, man, you, you won Gmail of the Year with this team, man. So uh yeah, we definitely comment on, Yeah, comment on who y'all think got the better team and who you guys feel like, you know, has dominated as far as GMing goes and who's like, man, I I, I was mad that you didn't pick job, but I understand why neither of y'all picked job, man. <laughs> or I understand why Treyon was picked as a six man because I, I didn't like it, but I understand where you come. You know what I mean? Just comment what you think below. So, um, I so, feel like I got well, the better team. We locking everything up, man, but, you know, it's whatever. So, let me ask you. Okay, so just, just to get a rundown, you want Ben Simmons – at the starting one, or you want Ben Simmons to be like post, like four man type stuff, like how the Nets probably for the album. I want him in a Draymond Green role. Oh, like he he facilitating, but he guarding a big type stuff. Yeah, he's he's my point forward type of guy. Where when it comes to like offensively, he's going to be like my quote unquote point guard. You know, what I mean, he's going to mm-hmm. the offense going to kind of flow through him. He's he's facilitating getting everybody involved. I don't care if you score, you score cool. We ain't doing that passing open, st- uh, passing open shot stuff. Like if you got a shot, shoot it. I don't care. Like, right. But you don't have to because we got a third of ball in book, a third of ball in Tatum, a third of ball in pool. If you don't shoot, it's not the end of the world. Like kind of like we got right now. You got Kyrie, you got Seth Curry, you got KD, you got Joe Harris right here. Like, bro, like you're good. You got shooters all around you. So not the end of the world if you don't shoot, but still it takes. So he's kind of my one. You know, be ready. Then um, D-Book the two, JT the three, or pool. Well, no, my bad. So we got D-Book, pool party, or, you know, however you want to flip flop them, JT, Ben Simmons, Bam out of bio. DeAndre ain't coming off the bench. That's team B-Ball Jones. And yeah, then, so techni- technically, technically, my starting four is really a starting four. So, like, no matter what, Ben Simmons, Book, Tatum, and Bam. That's my automatic four. Mm-hmm. Pool and Aiden are kind of interchangeable. So, if I want to go big, all right, Aiden starting at my five. Everybody shifts. So, we're going downsizing. And then mm-hmm. I want to run a gun. Okay, cool. Aiden comes out. Pool comes in. We're running. Whatever. So, it's kind of like Aiden and Pool are the interchangeable six man of the year. But, for sure, starting four. And then, like, if you got Triple J in, and y'all running, and for whatever reason, they matching up. Okay, cool. Pool party, you go in, but you're gonna run with y'all too. You're gonna, you're gonna have to try to outscore us. That's, that's a tough game, but like, forget it. Let, let's lock up now. We feel like a for real, for real. Pool come out, yeah. Eddie come in. We locking all that up, bro. So we got Ben Simmons, 
Dam and Aiden. What? So back, that's kind of back line like, defense. It's tough, man. And then you got uh let's, let's think about like a basic two three. You're gonna have uh Book and Tatum up top. They're not great defenders, but they can sit down when they really want to. You feel me? Like they mm-hmm. sit down and lock up when they want to. So you got them up top. Ben Simmons can switch out however you want to do that. It don't really matter. Then you got Aiden and Bam. They can switch out however they want to right there. So defense wise, you're locking all this stuff up. Offensively, we're very interchangeable. So that's kind of where I'm going with that, man. But um yeah, that's that's my team, man. So, uh, break down your team. All right, and so you got me and my team. You got Luca at my one, Ant Man at the two. You got Zion and Bi on the wings, Zion and Brandon Ingram, and then you got Triple J, Jerry Jackson Jr. at the five, and you got Trey Young, ironically coming off the bench. <laughs> so that's crazy. I know it's crazy to say, but you know, it just how it worked out. But I'm good with it. I'm good with my team. I like Luca handling my ball. I like Ant Man and, and Brandon Ingram on my wings. Like they they gonna be hard to stop. And then you got Zion, who's you know athletic force, but Danny unstoppable on that in that paint. You know, hard to stop him. Then you got Jerry Jackson Jr., who can still space the floor out and shoot. Still play great defense. Can put him on a big. I feel like I can trust him on the wing a little bit too. I got I got guys. I feel like can swap all five positions minus Luca. Like I feel like Zion, Jared Jackson Jr., and Bi can switch everything. Like we good. And then you know we got Zion and Jared can block shots. So I, I like our chances to guard. I like our chances to make get stops, and I like our chances to get buckets. So I like us. <laughs> yeah man i think we got some we got two solid teams man and uh i feel like you know one day somebody needs to call me and say hey we need, we need your advice b what should we do here <laughs> now i'm gonna show them this, i'm just showing this episode and just tell them what they should do and then <laughs> you, you ain't got to give me no recognition i just want i just want the money forget, just the, want pain, the, shit. forget the recognition just give me give me a check like you would give a gm i don't need the full season Give me something like give me like a monthly stipend of what GM would be. Something like that, man. You know. So mm. just give me just write me a check, you know, and just send it over and we're good, you know. But um yeah, man. It's uh, this wraps up on my end of what you know this episode is. So broke down the guys that we, you know, personally got some love to. Sorry, Ja, that I ain't picking my draft, but he's still one of my favorite guys. Um, and we talked about the face of the league, you know, guys we feel like should fit there, could fit there, and all the above. And finally wrapped it up with the draft, man, where had an interesting draft, you know, took a few little turns that neither of us thought we'd have had, and, you know, very interesting picks. And I know some people gonna kill us in the comments, but it's all good, but. All right. Uh, good episode, man, so that's it for me, man, as far as I know. Anything else you wanna add? No, I'm saying, man, that's it for me. This, you know, I like us. <laughs> But we're going to leave it up to the people to decide, though, man. So y'all be sure to hop in the comments, man. Let us know which, which team y'all think will win. Y'all think B will be the team will win. You think I'm going to win. So y'all let us know because we for sure want to know. So yeah, y'all make sure to do that. But that does it for another episode of the B-Ball Jones Podcast, man. Uh, we appreciate y'all for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe and, uh, and comment. Let us know what y'all think. Let us know who some of your favorite young players and who y'all like to watch or that's coming up in the league now. Let us know who you think might be the new face of the league. That's always something we're trying to see now. You know, let us know who you think is going to be the face. But um, be sure to follow Brian on all social medias at B Ball Jones. That's B E Ball Jones on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and on TikTok. So go check him out. And then follow me on Twitter at Nelly H34 and Nelson on IG. And you can find me at my name on Facebook. And uh, that does it for us, man. Once again, we appreciate y'all for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode, man. But without further ado, we out. <laughs>